Music that will jar your fillings can only mean we've come to the main event. Bruce Selden and Oliver McCall. Bruce Selden, a guy that people really are talking about as a, an eventual challenger for the heavyweight championship and a legitimate one. Let's take a look at Bruce Selden. They call him the Atlantic City Express, and Bruce Selden has survived a few broken tracks to keep up with his schedule toward heavyweight stardom. He easily beat Mike Robinson. And then he handled Big John Morton just as easily, starting fast. And finally, putting an end to things in the seventh. And against David Bay, Bruce had to persevere through injuries to both hands. He had a quick start, and he hung in there to break Bay's nose and win on a TKO. And there is a look at Oliver McCall. Looks mean. Hey, he says he's ready. And even the special song of Bruce Selden that they're playing as he comes in doesn't appear to phase Oliver McCall. How about that? No, in fact, I, I, I vote for uh, McCall's music. Well, it's got a nice beat. Easy to dance to. I give it a 95. Not an 86. And there's Bruce Selden. <laughs> Selden, a guy really does seem to be improving. Let's talk about the keys to victory in this one, Al. For Selden, box, box, box. Don't get involved in a, in a slug fest with him. But when I say sustain the attack, even while you're boxing, he's got to be punching. For McCall, keep the pressure on at all times. And Oliver McCall has an excellent right hand. That's what he wants to get in. All right, let's meet him now with Michael Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., the chairman is Jerry Gormley, board members Gary Shaw and Richard Harrison, deputy commissioners are Yogi Hilter and Lawrence Wallace. The three judges for this bout are Vinny Renoni, Lynn Carter, and Joseph Pasquale, timekeeper Arthur Spell, chief physician at the ringside Dr. Frank Bidogat, also in attendance Dr. Eric Wormser and Dr. Stanley Eden. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Donald Trump's Taj Mahal Casino Resort here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, let's get ready to rumble! Ten rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. The referee for this bout is Tony Perez. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks with blue trim, he weighs an even 221 pounds. From Chicago, Illinois, his professional record, 15 victories with nine KOs, only four defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, Oliver, the Atomic Bull, McCall. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with gold trim, weighing an even 221 pounds, from right here in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Undefeated as a professional, with a record of 18-0, 15 KOs, Introducing the Atlantic City Express, Bruce Selden. Selden McCall, I understand you already been given the instructions. Give me a good clean fight, I will not bother neither one of you. Two things you must remember. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Shake hands. Good luck. So look at Bruce Selden, some serious pacing going on from both competitors. Both fighters really ready, absolutely in peak condition, and McCall giving himself, we said this earlier about another fighter on this card, but really giving himself a real chance to win the fight. Yeah, excellent conditioning for him. He acknowledged it's probably the best condition that he has been in uh, in a long, long time, and even without the condition he has tonight, he has given uh, heavyweight some problems. There you see the knockout uh, ratio. Better for Seldon, but McCall can punch. Selton said he wants to box him, and as you indicated, that's what he needs to do. Does have a good, strong jab, and there's a look at it. You and I did that bout in which he walked out against Jose Robalta. Selton got just smashed with the right hand, went down for all the world. It looked like he wouldn't get up. He got up, and he said, at, when he first was knocked down, he said, I was out of it. And it's all of a sudden, I, it came back to me, and I heard the count at about five or six and jumped up. Yeah, we thought he was kind of faking it. And he said no. Yeah, I originally thought that it was a ploy. And I, I told him, I said, you could have gotten away with that, but you're too honest. <laughs> There's the right by McCall. The right hand by Selden, yeah. too. And I'm sure that McCall Look, he did look at the tapes of Revolta, and he said very plainly today, he said, if I hit him with a good right hand like that, he's not getting up. Well, we'll see. 
McCall's most recent losses are forgivable ones. Split decision to Orland Norris in his last fight in November. And they lost to Buster Douglas, and that was a, a, a fit Buster Douglas. Yeah, and, and Buster Douglas who had in uh, some trouble toward the end of that bout. Paul has been sparring with uh, Tommy Morrison, of which we saw a little bit earlier. And uh, he said he thought there was great sparring for the Selden box because Morrison has the same quickness of hands. The jab of Selden working very well early here in this bout, and of course, that's a vital weapon for him. Not all those landing, but enough getting in. Those blocks as was that one. McCall really uh, economical with his punches here. Well, not doing much in the first round. Excellent jab there, my McCall. First one he's thrown. That may have stunned uh, Selden. Yeah, I'll tell you, it caught Selden on the way in and it knocked him backwards. Selden says, come on, but I don't know that he really wants McCall to throw more punches at that moment. So we head to the end of the first round, Selden more active, and McCall with the biggest single punch of the fight. <laughs> round number two, Bruce Selden and Oliver McCall, and McCall showing a very good jab in that first round. Yeah, he didn't throw it as much as he'd like, but when it it landed, it landed well. A couple of the one, I think he really surprised Bruce Selden with his power. Bruce Selden is getting a little bit more aggressive here, and I think he is because he felt a little power from McCall in that last round, I believe. Well, the right eye of McCall is is kind of, uh, as we take a look at the punches from the last round, Selden clearly out punching McCall. Oliver McCall's right eye was squinting with it. It might have caught a little bit of a thumb in. Yeah, it, in fact, it looked like it was almost closed for just a minute. Got to take a look at it when they turn around our way. And he's still having some trouble with it. Still blinking. And Selden, to his credit, taking advantage of it, being more aggressive, and that may be the reason why he did bore in. McCall's still blinking the eye. I think you're absolutely right, I think he did catch a thumb. There isn't a lot of swelling, though, but he's just having trouble, obviously, clearing it. McCall is throwing his right hand just a little bit wide. And, uh, he's not getting as much power as he'd like him to. McCall said that he felt that Bruce Selden would try to jump on him. Selden said he was going to box him, but so far, McCall's thinking is the right one. Especially in round two. McCall picking the tempo up a little bit now. He is, uh, I think McCall's a little right hand happy here. He's using the jab more and mixing it to the body, which he did just there, and then the uppercuts. Both men have earned a healthy respect from the other in terms of the, the power they've shown. No man has landed a, really a real perfect bomb, if you will, but they've both landed enough decent power shots to give each other some respect. And you know one thing about Bruce Selden is I don't see as many body shots from him as we've seen in recent bouts. Yeah, in fact, when he first came up, he did it a lot. Worked off the jab a lot, went downstairs, especially early in fights a lot. Now he covers up. Very lethargic move there by Selden. He was pushed back, and some other boxer may have jumped on him. McCall didn't, but again, the jab of McCall gets there. And it is a good jab. It gets Selden backing up. McCall sparing and using it. Oh, the head, that's what is, is a problem here. The head against them calls eye again. Both, are, both men hurt by the clash of heads. Interesting second round. That's a real tactical round. There's a jab to the, uh, to the eye, and he closed it a little bit. That may have been where, uh, where that I started squinting. 
So we start the third round, and that second round really was a, a tactical kind of round. And there we have the punches. Look at how close that second round was. Let me credence to your 10-10 well, score. I thought it was very, very close, and the numbers would bear that out. Well, there's Sheldon using his jab effectively in the uppercut. He is more of a combination puncher than McCall. Obviously, that was a very good jab right there. He didn't follow it up very well with the right hand, though. McCall is going to have to get off first more in this bout. So, so his jab is, is really effective. I mean, that is a, a weapon that must work for him, and it has tonight. And he's doing more of it here in the third round, as he did in the first round. Second round, he brawled a little bit with him. Oliver McCall's not landing the right hand. Selden's keeping his hands up. What will land for McCall is the right uppercut. So instead of throwing the straight right after the jab, the right uppercut, even though it's a risk taking a proposition, would be good. There's a right to land. It. And that hurt it. See him do a little shuffle when he landed that right hand. And that came because McCall landed a good jab before it. Many people believe Jose Revolta was a good test for Selden. I think a lot of boxing people think McCall is an even better test. McCall never knocked out in his career. Four losses have all come by way of decision. Again, as we said, those decisions against some people that you don't have to be ashamed to lose to at all. Buster Douglas and Orland Norris. Mike the Bounty Hunter, who's one of the toughest guys on earth to box, and another early in his career. And a nice right hand from McCall. It caught Selden on the way in. He is so much better when he uses that jab, McCall. Okay, Brett. Brett. a round in which Oliver McCall might be uh, gaining his first round uh, in, the, uh, in his column. Yeah, Selden working the jab a little else in this round. And even working the jab off a stiff-legged posture. End of round number three, and on our cards, an even fight. Well, this is why replays are so nice. Here's the right hand that we thought really landed well to the head of Selden, but no, he turned away and that punch did not really hurt him. So this is the fourth round now. In the third round, our punch profile shows Bruce Selden more effective, mainly off the jab. It's interesting, and I ended up giving that round to McCall, but. Uh, Selden uh, was outlanded 12 to 5 in power punches by McCall, but uh, Selden landed 19 jabs to McCall's four in the last round. Tommy Graziano telling his man, as you look at Al's card, which shows it an even fight, telling his man between rounds to stay at long range, don't let him get on top of you, and box him. And he thought that his fighter lost the last round. He said, you gave it to him. So let him get inside. Let him get too close. This a 10 round heavyweight fight. Bruce Selden in the black trunks with the gold stripe, the gold tassels on his shoes. Oliver McCall in the white trunks, blue stripe. A very close fight so far. Interesting fight. He had a different colored trunks. I think they were black, and they asked him if he would mind wearing another color if they provided. He said yes, as long as it's not pink. Just don't give me pink. Except the white and blue.
Yeah, I mean, Blake used to fight in pink trunks. Uh, pink trunks on the salsa, yeah, as you might well. expect. <laughs> been a little tentative in this round. Paul trying to get that jab out there, but it's an underused weapon for him. See, there now he tries the uppercut, which might be a little more effective for him. Good uh, defense by Bruce Selden. Pretty soon all these young heavyweights that have been watched that we've been watching will start to weed each other out. Talking about making a nice right hand that time by McCall, but Selden bounced right back. Talk about making Mercer Morrison. Mm -hmm. A very interesting battle. Of course, Mercer uh, looking at Selden here, knowing, or, Mo or rather, Morrison looking at Selden at ringside here, knowing he's a potential opponent. McCall has done a couple of very good things here in this round. Number one, he's been busy. Number two, he has found the uppercut as a, a decent weapon. As you saw there, he threw the right, then he came with the uppercut. See, there it is. He, he sees that as a possibility. And even though a lot of these punches are being blocked, Selden is so, throwing so few punches that. I think Oliver McCall might be taking another round here. Yeah, not a bad round for McCall, and he jumps on him at the end of the round as well. We'll be back. Well, this right hand by Oliver McCall, a little better than the other one we showed you, but it also shows you that Selden is turning away from that punch pretty well. A very significant uh, statistic, though, punch profile tells us that it's the first round in which we'll call out jab Selden, out jabbing him 10 to 9, or 10 to 7, I'm sorry. McCall wants Selden to come to him now, and I'm not sure Selden will do that. But again, Carmen Graziano told Selden he lost the round, that he's given away the last two rounds. Through the first four rounds, Selden a little bit more active, but McCall has been the heavier puncher. You can see how close it is from that, though. And they, they gave Selden a real pep talk. He landed an excellent right hand. They said, go after this guy. And that's what he's doing, and he just landed well. Good right hand a moment ago. But there is danger here because, yeah, there it is. If you brawl with Oliver McCall, you could have some problems. Because he's not timid, and he'll throw. It's interesting to see what Carmen Graziano has to say to Bruce Selden after this round, if it continues the way it started. McCall trying to find a home for that uppercut. Now, he's sort of from too far out. That's the big problem. Selden is shaking his head no, but meanwhile, standing there with her gloves up and taking those shots, some of whom are getting it, is not a great idea, unless they really think McCall is going to tire out. Now, McCall is also really ignoring the body, as is Selden. That might be an open target for him. And to tell the truth, McCall is starting to puff just a little bit. Breathing through his mouth a little bit more. I wouldn't say he's a tired fighter yet, but he's on the road. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, they may have felt that. There's the jab, though. Some blood coming from the nose, I think, of Selden. Right hand off the top of the head. See, now McCall is being more active. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's throwing more punches in this round than Selden, probably. Yeah, nice jab by Selden. And a big right hand by Selden. That hurt McCall. He holds on. But McCall still in Wabla. This last rally by Selden might be taking this round. He, the judges remember the latter part of rounds, although McCall did well early. Gonna walk you back into the corner of Oliver McCall. He does seem to be all right now. Bruce Selden, toward the end of the round, lands this excellent right hand. And uh, when he's been able to get the right hand in it, it's been effective. From yet another angle, and you can see the he got pretty good power into that one. In fact, Selden landed 63% of his power shots in the last round. So we start the sixth round, scheduled for 10. 
It's not been a cakewalk for Bruce Seldon. No, it hasn't, but last round she showed very well, I thought. Yeah, very, had the good jab working, the right hand. A real hard and even fight through the first five rounds. Give the last round to uh, Seldon. That guy's very close. Selden working the jab. You heard Carmen Graciano tell him, bob and weave. That was a good right hand. Is he faking? No, I don't think, I don't so. think he's faking at all. And he is in some trouble. And now the call jumps on him. And the uppercut got there. Selden says, come on. And McCall obliges. Bruce Selden is punching, but he's still dazed. Dangerous, but dazed. Oh, my. Right hand that rocked McCall. Now McCall holds on, trying to get the cobwebs out. Well, the heart of Bruce Selden tested here and not found wanting, is it? right hand. The first one actually I thought was caught partially on the glove. Bruce Seldon has really turned things around here. He's, he's still a little wobbly. They're both wobbly. I think both men are still hurt. Yeah, Seldon looks very looks stiff legged almost. Both men are really not very steady right now. Seldon may be a little less so even than McCall. Not the easiest round to score. But McCall may be a little more tired. Hey, and there's the thought. How about a body shot, huh, guys? They could, they could do some damage with those. Neither man has done much of that. No, time. McCall went downstairs. Well, this round took a lot out of both fighters. Yeah, it would, the seventh round would be a fascinating and pivotal one to see. Selden now showing a little movement. We thought we'd see more of anyway in this bout. Gets the crowd excited. Oh, he took a left hand from McCall for all that dancing. Here's where Oliver McCall in the last round really stunned Bruce Selden. That one landed, even though Selden was backing away at the time. And at first, it almost looked like he was feigning this, but no, he was not. Covered up and uh, took some more shots, but Bruce Selden did not take himself out of this bout. He landed a good left hand, and he came back in that round. Fascinating round as we come to round seven. McCall, actually, more power punches in that last round landed than Selden. 14 to 5, according to our punch profile, guys. Look at the numbers in the sixth round, boy, awfully close. Yeah, and probably I meant I gave the edge to McCall, probably based, I guess, on the, on the number of power punches he landed. Good right hand by McCall. Selden gets out of it. And if ever there was a time when Bruce Selden should decide to box him, I have McCall ahead by one point, it would be now. If he were to give McCall some movement, keep using that jab, I think he could still turn this bot right back into his favor if it's not there now. The jab has been an effective weapon for Selden, but he's let it go on occasion. Forgotten about it. Now this is, now look at how the posture of this spot has changed. Here's Selden now pushing in to get to McCall, getting low, showing some versatility in all truth. Now we mentioned earlier McCall breathing through his mouth and maybe showing a little bit of fatigue. Selden doing that now. Big uppercut by McCall, but then he turned away. I don't know exactly what the reason is. 
I do think the call getting a little tired, but then both men are yeah, I think, a bit fatigued. I think that sixth round really took a lot out of both men, as you mentioned. Well, we told you up front that Oliver McCall had a very legitimate chance in this bout, and he does. A very close match. He has hurt Sheldon, as, has, as he has been hurt himself. And the danger in a bout like this for a young man like Sheldon, and I don't overstate this, is the bloom can be taken off the rolls. There could be people looking at this deciding, uh, you know, is this young man the, the, the contender we thought he would be? Well, everybody talks, of course, about fighters' chins. That's one of the big question marks, of course, about Evander Holyfield at the moment. And when you look at Bruce Selden, who has been hurt on a couple of occasions, Revolta had him down, and Paul's had him hurt a couple of times. Certainly, that's people are going to talk about that. Right now, uh, Selden's employing the right strategy by boxing with McCall, I think. Whether it'll win him this round, I don't know. But End of round number seven, and the fight is still up for grabs. We'll be back. Oh, remember those keys to victory? Well, uh, if you look back at those, Selden, uh, I thought, should box. I don't think he's boxed enough. And I don't know that he sustained his attack as much as he would like. It's kind of a mixed bag for him. For McCall, I'm not sure he's kept the pressure on as much as he should, but he has definitely landed that right hand. And boy, here's, here's an example. That one kind of off the side of the head, but he's throwing it, and uh, he has landed some real freight train right hands. If I could come down to attrition. As we start the eighth round, and both fighters a little bit tired, and we'll see who has what left. <laughs> Through the first seven rounds, look at the punch profile numbers. Extremely close. Selden with about a 20-point punch edge or so, 21. But, but uh, you know, again, when you're in that range, depending on rounds, which rounds did you pile your edge up in? And the power punching edge is probably to McCall. By a little bit, yeah. Well, they both exchange excellent jabs. Actually, Oliver McCall hasn't been as accurate with his right hand probably as he would like. He's landed a fair share of them. But I don't think the accuracy level is exactly what he would want. Nice right hand by Selden. Very nice punch on the inside. You know, it hasn't been a bad effort by Bruce Selden, but it's been an uneven effort. Right at the moment, Al, it looks like McCall's kind of pushing his punches to me. Yeah, he is then pushing Selden as well, but keeping Selden from throwing a lot of punches. And when you look at this, if Selden can't get his punches off on the inside, he's going to have a hard time scoring any points. Selden still has bounce in his step, but switching back and forth from lefty to righty, but not throwing too much. And you know, the burden here was much more on Bruce Selden coming into this spot to look really spectacular, do well. All the national media is here. As you said, the day before the big heavyweight bout, chance to showcase himself. And instead, what he's done is fought a good journeyman heavyweight to a standstill. I don't know if that gets the job done for him, win, lose, or draw. And in this round, every time Selden, McCall had been doing quite well to that point. Selden got McCall turned around with a double left hand. Selden getting much the better in that exchange. Yeah, even though McCall has him against the ropes, Selden landing a couple of good shots. Crowd taking up the chant, Bruce, Bruce. But this in a round in which Bruce Selden didn't throw many punches in the beginning portion. There's another good jab by McCall. McCall has not been accurate in this round, but he's thrown so many more punches. It's one of those misses that takes a lot out of you. So we come to the end of the eighth round. There will be six minutes of boxing left when we come back right after this. We start the ninth round, and again, it's one of those fights that still can be had, I think, by either man. 
And the way that round ended, with Bruce Selden in this posture, even with not everything landing, is not the stuff that contenders or champions are made of. It's not the thing that Bruce Selden wants people to remember about this bout. Nice right by Selden. Punches in the eighth round, and McCall threw more punches, which yeah. kind of helps it, because Selden got the better of it in the corner at the end of the round. Selden more accurate, but a very close round again. Now, I guess if Bruce Selden is getting all these close rounds, then he's going to be in decent shape. But if not, it's going to have a problem. And for Oliver McCall, from his standpoint, I, I would think he is going to have to even pick up the pace even more. Because let's face it, he's not the name guy here. Uh, he's the guy that has to really go out and get a win. He is pushing the pace a little bit in this ninth round. And I guess what I almost really mean to say is be really accurate with his punches. More accurate. But Bruce Selden, he's not throwing. Maybe he hurt his hands again. Maybe he re-injured those hands. I don't know. Bruised both hands against David Bay, as we mentioned. And Selden goes down. And again, we talked about attrition. I just think that's more tired than anything else. A couple of short right hands. And I think Bruce Selden is just whipped, as you said. He's just tired. He's not far from going, folks. And down he goes again. From a, a, a nothing punch. Three knockdown rule in effect here. And there's a minute, over a minute left. I, he might be a beaten fighter. Uh, I, right now, he looks all a part of a beaten fighter. I mean, he, he went down for, for a punch and landed on his arms. His legs are just shot. We mentioned oh. that earlier. Great body shot. That's the ticket for Oliver McCall. That's what he wants. And they may stop this any minute now. They've got to stop it pretty soon. They almost have to step in. Tony Perez taking a long look. Still a long way to go. 45 seconds. McCall will not let Selden out of that corner. Selden trying to punch out. Got his hands caught on the ropes. Well, you know what? I should stop. But Bruce Selden is punching back. Let's see what he does now. He still has nothing left at all. One more knockdown, the fight's over. And if I was Oliver McCall, I would rip that body right now. And there he goes, that's it. Oliver McCall has scored a huge upset here. Yet a predictable upset. In some respects, yes, because Bruce Selden stopped doing things offensively in that in about the seventh round. Boy, the look of a disappointed and dejected young man. And, and we have to say, Bruce Selden, a hard worker, works at this craft, really wanted to, to, to be in control.